Hello and welcome everybody. This is your host, <coughs> Leervok, and you're just in time for more Darksiders. In the last episode, we got the uh, Voidwalker, a ability to shoot portals of the orange and blue variety. It's not so much orange, it's sort of like reddish orange. Hmm. Very portal-like if you ask me. And in this episode, we're going to continue through the tower and actually fight one of, I believe, three enemies that we're fighting here that are the same type of enemy. The big difference will be that the arena will change. Right here we have a golem. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the official name of it, but that's what I'm calling it. So this is a boss that if we go to attack normally, you notice that we actually don't deal damage and instead has that kind of ricochet look effect that you would normally see from a hit that would not deal damage. Um, so what you're supposed to do is wait for it to do basically that move where it's where it sticks its mace, chain mace, into the ground where it can't move and then fly up on its back from the top using the uh, using the portals, positioning the portals in different areas so that you can actually fly up above them. Uh, right now it's pretty easy because they give us a good amount of portals to work a good a good amount of space to work with. Um, a good spot for this battle at least is to kind of keep try to keep them near near one of the portals. It's always going to be one of the suggested areas, but always have one in the middle so that you can kind of get just about anywhere from there. Um, as you can tell, it's pretty easy so far. Um, and back, back, back! There we go. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I'm in a wall. That was not good. Um, one of the worst things about this mission, um, about this, this battle, which is Something I've been complaining about, I haven't been recently, and you thought, you thought I was finished, didn't you? The aiming mechanics. Ah, crap. Because you have to click the controller to aim. Oops, I thought it didn't be there for a second. Um, because you have to click the, do the middle click on the controller to actually aim, and it's... And yet, and yeah, that the way it works and stuff, it really makes it very difficult to do it quickly, which kind of shows you the flaw, major flaw in that system. Uh, it really kind of disrupts the pacing of the game. So, for future developers who are making Dark Siders three, hopefully, making Dark Siders three, keep that in mind. If there's one thing that can go, it's this. Just make it to where we just aim like normal. Middle click could pop up the uh, cursor, maybe, and just kind of give you some to gu kind of give you a guide to work with. Um, but anyway, what we need to do actually is pop a portal up there, and then pop one right here. That'll allow the beam to be transmitted through the portal. You're gonna be doing a lot of this now. In the backtrack. This is the backtracking portion. There's gonna be two other sections of the game that we're gonna be doing this with. Um. So now we just need to actually. I should have planned this out a little better. I didn't think this through. <laughs> um. Just in that portal. Um, this is where actually rescinding portals can come really handy because it gives you <coughs> and right there that transferred all the energy into that uh, into that thing. Actually, we can. I'm gonna take a risk. Cause I think no. Well, never mind. I don't want to take the risk. There you go. There we go. <laughs> That made it easier. Kind of kept us from having to backtrack. 
And once this lands, hopefully this will go a lot faster than what I have to do. Um, but I remember having to do oh, quite a bit actually. Um, quite a bit of work. Um, being yeah, primarily spending a lot of time doing a lot of the a lot of the work. It got really kind of it gets really confusing at times. Um, And then there are these. Uh, is this? No, this is just the two. No, it looks like it looks like three. Uh, of course. I hate these banshees with a passion unlike any other. I say that a lot, don't I? Oh, well, to be fair, all my hatred is unique. And I hate them uniquely compared to all the other things that I hate. It's like when I say that I hate everybody. It's like, it's not that I hate you. I hate you because... It's not because I hate you for the same reasons I hate the guy next to you. It's because I hate... It's because I hate you because of a different quality. You're unique. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I of course kid and I say I hate, I hate everyone, um, there's plenty of people I like, you know, <laughs> uh, most of them I don't know personally, and most of them I, no, it's also, it's also a lot of people I don't like too, <laughs> there are people I don't know personally, um, which I guess would kind of be a lot of people's Hatred, because you know, even though, even like that's at school bully at at school, that sounds redundant. Um, even that bully at school or that guy at work you may not know per, uh, personally, but I don't know. I guess Michael Bay is a different kind of no no personally or M Night Shyamalan, like, which again I hate them both for different reasons. <laughs> Michael Bay I hate because well. Everyone else, for the same reason everyone else hates Michael Bay, you know, he ruined your childhood. Doesn't give a crap about the movies he makes and just knows they, they, give him they give him money. Which, I mean, I guess I can respect that, but at the same time, when that's all you're doing your work for, it's kind of hollow and meaningless, which kind of makes him hollow and meaningless. And Shyamalan I hate because of what he did to Last Airbender. Um, primarily not the fact that the movie got created, but the fact that he kind of ruined the chances of there being a good movie adaptation, a good live action movie adaptation of the Avatar Last Airbender series. Um, because, and before, anyone said, and before anyone says, oh, but there's a chance they could make a good one later on, this is Hollywood we're talking about. You know the chances of that, of that happening. Um, but anyway, now that we're done with this fight, we have a portable pop there, and we'll pop one on the other side. You probably guessed that by now. <laughs> Um, but real quick, we're gonna get this. Um, that battle was not nearly as painful as I thought it'd be, and somehow I. Okay, I need to rearrange the weapon, uh, item, equipment real quick. Um, <sighs> if your secondary weapon didn't take up that bottom slot, just. doesn't give you that as great a feeling as it does in Metroid. Wow, I'm very kind of shocked at that. And the more I start thinking about it, I was like, yeah, it still is kind of a neat little... I think they, maybe it's the animation, the way that they animate them? Like, there's not really any... anything to it? Like, like it feels like it's... I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why it sounds like I'm. It feels like it, it, like the animation is ripped from Zelda, like from Ocarina of Time. Cause like you, you look at that. Like the animation for that is always the same. It's always like being pulled towards the object, which makes sense. I mean, it is the nature of things. Um, actually, I think that's in the right position, so we need to move that. No, oh, oh no. 
Hold on, before I start jumping the gun here, let me make sure of where everything is. Okay, so that was in the right position. Um, remember this room, ladies and gentlemen. I mentioned this earlier. Having to do the, having to do this on the way back. Um, well, oh, oh, there we go. I know what we gotta do here. And I think we just have the this one to do. I think I know what I did wrong here. So I think I know what we need to... Yep, there we go. Okay. So we actually need to pop a portal here, and then pop a portal here. We're not worry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there everything else right? Let me make sure the other one's right. Nope. So I was actually screwed up with this one, so let's... Uh, Oh, wow, I did not know that could happen. I was just walking through to see if I could, like, while it was moving, because, you know, so it, it looked like they locked you away, didn't it? Um, so we need to move this. And actually, I'm going to want to get up. So, where's the... Is there a switch on this side? Yep, there is. So we'll do that. You told me I made it to the other side. Okay, and it looks like the portal, the portal, the beam went away, so we can actually just walk straight through to the next, uh, to the other side and be okay. Um, which in that case, and we're done with this chamber because I think this takes us straight back to the main chamber. There we go. If it's not stop loading. So we activated one of these skull things. Demon skulls statues. Oh, that, that's, that's kind of a neat design. But Horseman, I never imagined that you would be my salvation. Hurry now, before Strada learns of your coming. When How I many... found you, you said the seventh seal was not. How many people broken. can say that war was their salvation? I've heard those words before. Patton is about the only guy I can think about say that. Right and I'm... He died. Oh, and that one guy from Metal Gear Rising. You know, the, actually all the bad guys from Metal Gear Rising. Um... Uh, possibly all the bad guys from Metal Gear, from Metal Gear series in general? So bait... And, uh, what's his name from GoldenEye? Um, Trevil uh, Trevilian, which, by the way, spoilers for a almost 20 year old movie, wow. <laughs> um, almost 20 years old. When did that movie come out? 96? Or is that when the game came out? I think that's when the game came out. So yeah, right here you notice the room has changed quite a bit. We now have spinning uh, platforms and raised areas. Raised, yeah, raised platforms and just basically the whole thing here. Basically going to be climbing from here on out. And yeah, this is involved in the challenges. I'm not, I wish I was kidding when I said that. Um, but we're going to have to get, when redirecting the beams, we're going to have to actually move all over the place here. Uh, actually, let me check the map real quick. Huh. Guess we have, no, that's the exit. Oh, we don't have, we don't actually have the dungeon map yet. Okay, um... Yeah, so you see that right there, that warp uh, panel, is primarily going to be related to the actual, uh, to the skulls, not to, not for us. Um, 
Oh, oh, wait, wait. Nope. Uh, oh, got it back on, yes. <laughs> not letting you get that, not letting you get the joy of that game. You're gonna have to earn my defeat. <laughs> uh, I just kind of opened up a can of worms there, didn't I? Okay, um... So I saw what looked like uh, that looks like the next way in, does it? Well, let's find out, shall we? Uh, we'll probably have to be up on the very top here. Um, can't get, can't seem to get any higher. So, actually, I don't think we need to be up, up this high. That will be something important. Actually, no, I want to try something. I haven't tried this out yet. I... Yep, okay. Yes, okay, I was right. Okay, so you can actually grab those fruit with the with the chain. This this is a bomb flower. This is a hook shot. This is Zelda. And that is not a bad thing, people. Let's just put it this way, there's a reason we can make these comparisons, because these games are great and they are worth they're worth making in, like it's say spin-offs or in they're worth being inspired. They're worth inspiring. I mean, hell, that's the whole thing that people talk about is like, well, Hollywood hasn't been creative in, since the 1930s. Actually, I think some people say since the 70s, but you, you could argue it's the 30s or something like that. But it, in all honesty, was, was Hollywood ever creative to begin with? Uh, but the thing is, like, it's not like coming up with new ideas is how you put spins on the old ideas, because, like, we've, it's, we won't, we've told, like, the same 17 stories that you could tell. We've, like, there's only, like, a handful of stories you could actually tell, and, and there's only so many of the, yeah, but there's an infinite possibility of how, of the way you can tell the story, like, how you can put stuff in, like, and by the end of the day, everything's predictable. Everything's cliche. But it's how you work with that cliche and what you add to it that makes it an awesome cliche. Like, how many games out there have tried to rip off Zelda? Oddly enough, I don't think a whole lot. Maybe they did in, like, the NES days. And but most games seem to don't seem to rip off Zelda, but yeah, you see, you still see stuff like Dark Tires and Okami, which are great when they do come out. It's like these games take bits and pieces of Zelda and then add their own stuff to it, um, and especially in the especially in both Dark Tires and Okami, and like just what they, what it's what they add to that formula. Um, I mean, it's kind of what Nintendo is claiming they're trying to do with Zelda is like they're trying to reinvent the formula. <clears throat> but the trick is going to be to reinvent it enough so that it's still a Zelda game, like gameplay-wise, but still a unique experience. They tried that with Skyward Sword and it mm, kind of didn't work. It's still, you know, Zelda, it's still the Zelda formula. Um, but anyway, I think for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode off here. So in the next episode, we'll be continuing on through the tower, and we'll actually get through the second set of challenges um, to get to the golem, which we'll fight, and then get the energy to come back through said challenges, and you get the idea. Until then, I will see you guys later.